With Zoom's recent update, 5.9.3, you can now create, remove, and rename breakout rooms. And that's not anything new. You were able to do that before. But the new thing is you can now do that after you launch the breakout rooms. So if you've ever had a situation where you set up breakout rooms for uh, the beginning of a meeting, beginning of a session, and then suddenly a few more people show up and you realize, oh, I would really love to have one more breakout room that I could send these extra people to. There was no option to do that. So now there has been an update that was just added at the end of January 2022, where you now can make those changes afterwards. You can also rename the breakout rooms afterwards. You can remove them if you created a few too many. And I think this is going to be a really big game changer for anyone who wants to on the fly create, remove breakout rooms and adjust based on the people that are attending your virtual experiences. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to set this up step by step because to enable this, this feature right now, today is January 28th, 2022. There are some hoops that you have to jump through to make sure that this actually is enabled on your account. But once you do, it just stays, once you go through this process that I'll show you today, it just stays enabled on your account and you can use it in any meeting that you have coming up. All right, let's get started. Actually, let me quickly just show you, um, maybe I can even show you what it looks like and that way, you kind of know what I am talking about. So let me jump into this view right here. So this is my Zoom meeting that I just launched. And as you know, when you create breakout rooms, you come to this window where you can add different rooms, right? Let me go in a little bit closer. You can add different rooms. You can rename them. You can call the rooms whatever you want, like your living room, etc. And you can also delete rooms again if you're like, oh, I created a few too many. But what used to happen is you click open the rooms and suddenly you can't make any changes anymore. And as you can see on my account right now, I still have the rename feature. So although there might be people in this room, I could then go in and name this room the swimming pool or whatever you prefer. I could also say, let me add an extra room for the people that arrived a little bit later. Or I could say, oh, I did, made one room too many and nobody's in there. Let me just delete that one and take that one out. So these are the things that we'll go through and I'll show you how to enable in this video today. Uh, and first of all, you want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date Zoom version. So this update is uh, 5.9.3. And as you can see, I highlighted here what some of the updates are. Um, and if you don't know how to update your Zoom client yet, uh, I do have a video where I walk you through that step by step, which I'll link in here and in the description later. So um, how do you actually enable this feature? Just updating your Zoom account, your Zoom client will not be enough. You actually have to go through an extra step, which is chatting with Zoom support. Yes, unfortunately, that's a feature that you have to have enabled. Uh, somebody from Zoom needs to log into your account and add this manually. And um, I was very lucky to chat with, um, hold on, oh, wrong, with one uh, Zoom support that was really nice in helping me out and it just took less than five minutes to do. So what you want to do is go to the Zoom website, number one, um, I'll walk you through it here. Go to the Zoom website, go to your account, make sure you're logged in. And then on the bottom right, you see this little chat icon. Um, this will open Bolt, which is their virtual assistant, but it's actually just a bot. So you're not going to be able to chat with them and have them enabled. You actually need to chat to an actual person. So my kind of shortcut is just type in the word human. And as soon as you do that, uh, a real person from Zoom, Zoom <laughs> support will show up. Um, so it says, no problem. Uh, and then they ask you, which team would you like to connect with? In this case, it is support. And then they're gonna ask you support for what? Um, and you're going to tell them it is a chat with support agent. And then it will ask you 
um, to choose Zoom meetings. I'm not going through all. I'm not going to go through all of these steps because I don't want to start a new ticket. But you get the idea. Uh, important thing to keep in mind is number one: this is only available for paid accounts. So if you have a free Zoom account, I don't think you'll be able to enable this feature because you don't have uh, Zoom support as a, uh, a part of your plan. And number two, once you do get to talk to them, just tell them that you would like to enable the um, changing, removing, adding breakout rooms after launch feature on your account. And they will work, walk you through it. Um, they will send you then an email with a transcript of all your chat, which you just have to confirm, yes, I would like to enable it. And um, my support person said it's going to take between 24 to 72, 72 hours to enable on your account. Um, on mine, it was there within a couple of hours. And as I was checking and then logging into my Zoom account, I'm like, it's not here. Why they enabled it? They said it should be working. So if that is you, there is one more step that you have to take. And I'll share that step with you right now. And then at the end, I'm gonna share with you one activity that I love to do at the start of my meetings, experiences, workshops, where this feature of changing breakout rooms after launch becomes super, super handy. So you want to stick around for that. So after you have it enabled from chat support, what do you do? Well, you come back to the website, you go to settings. And I usually used to um, click command F to search on this page. But as you can see, they even added this amazing search bar. So you could use that on the top and just type in breakout and it will take you to that section. And you will see that there's a third check mark that you can then add down here, which says, allow host to create, rename, and delete breakout rooms when they are open. Um, you will need the most up-to-date Zoom version for this to work. And you will only see this after the Zoom, I have some trouble saying Zoom today. Um, the Zoom chat support has enabled it manually on your account. So this will only show up after that. But once you click that and you relaunch your Zoom app, you should be able to do it the way I showed you earlier. Like you see, the rooms are even still open. So let me close them again. Let's uh, recreate some rooms. Let's say we're going to assign them manually. Let's just create a couple of rooms. There you go. This is how I usually would do it. Uh, have people assigned, open the rooms, and then you should still be able to rename the rooms, delete the rooms, and add additional rooms. So that's how you enable the feature. But why does this matter? Like, How are we actually going to use this to create more engaging, inclusive, interactive experiences in our Zoom meetings and experiences? Well, the one thing that I've really been missing from in-person events are the lineups. No, uh, actually, I've been missing the lineups because they're great opportunities to chat with someone casually before an event starts. If you think of the last in-person event that you attended, you might have met some people waiting in line to get a coffee or to grab a drink, to grab a snack from the buffet. Maybe you've talked to the person sitting next to you in the audience before the show really starts. And I feel like in a virtual event, we often miss out on these opportunities because as soon as you get admitted from the waiting room or an event starts, you're right away there in a room with a lot of people and you can't have these small group or one-on-one -on -one conversations anymore. So I started doing this in my virtual facilitator training cohorts where I would admit people a few people at a time, let's say maybe three to five people at a time, and I would tell them, today's your lucky day. You just won a backstage pass. And um, this backstage pass is for the other person's Zoom square. Because usually what we see is, at least in my case, very well designed, or people have blurred backgrounds or virtual backgrounds. So anything that is outside of this square doesn't really make appearance in Zoom calls much. But there's so many things around me that you don't see right now that would tell a story about who I am. So it's a great opportunity to connect with someone and allow them to share a little bit more. So there's, um, so this is basically how you do it. Like I said, you, number one, want to tell your participants 
ahead of time that you're going to do this activity at the start. So you want to make sure that they show up early. Um, ideally, you also don't want everyone to show up at the same time because you're going to like admit groups of people at a time. So I usually tell everyone um, if you want to network, if you want to connect with people before we officially start at, let's say, 11 a.m., show up 10 to 15 minutes earlier and we'll do a fun little activity. Number two is you want to have your waiting room enabled so people can just join the meeting by themselves. You have to admit them. Um, it's also a good practice to customize your waiting room message to let them know that this time you're going to do something special and they should just grab a drink of water or be ready for to, uh, to be admitted any moment. And then um, once you admit the first group, tell them about the backstage pass. And this is really an opportunity to either pick up your laptop, pick up your device and take the other people on a journey and show them your favorite place inside your house or apartment. Maybe even show them the view out of your window, anything that they usually don't get to see. And if you're courageous enough, you might even share something that is a little bit more personal about you. Um, and then as a backup, if you don't have a camera that can be moved, like my camera is pretty much fixed where it is, you could also just hold up different objects like this pencil case that I just bought recently. Um, and my favorite pen that is always living near me that I use for handwritten notes like these. And you can just hold up different things in the camera that just tell a little bit of a story about you. This is, by the way, my perfect week schedule that I'm implementing this year where Friday afternoons are completely off. I'm not working. So I'm very excited about that. And then um, as you've done your intro, it's really good to have that down to like a few points, maybe even have a slide to explain it because after you tell that to the first group, you send them to their breakout room, you admit the next few people, you do your spiel again, you do your explanation, you send them to a breakout room and so on. Um, ideally, this works for smaller groups of maybe five to maximum 30 people because it takes a bit of time until the last person or last group is in the breakout room and the first group will be in there the longest. So the cool thing about this activity compared to giving, giving everyone a specific question is they get to really fill this time exploring like, hey, tell me more about that campfire behind you and showing different objects and making it less structured the same way as it would be at the start of an in-person event. So if you uh, are going to try this, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think, how it went. Um, if you have any questions about enabling that Zoom feature, let me know as well if you have any trouble. And if you want to really master the skill of virtual facilitation, like using all of this amazing technology that we have access to, like Zoom uh, or other virtual meeting platforms, then um, check out the link that I'll drop below for my next virtual facilitator training. I'm actually redesigning some of the content from the ground up now in 2022. And I'm only hosting this training twice this year. It's going to be a live cohort. It's going to be over five weeks. It's going to result in you joining a community of amazing people that create virtual group experiences. And one of the types of people that I want to focus on this year is the people who run cohort based courses um, by joining my cohort based course, because the focus of creating connections and community is the thing that sets it apart from anything else that is out there. So if you want more info, check out the link below. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye.